I don't feel it quite yet. Oh, 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 oh. So after the success of yesterday's video going up, it's got a fair decent amount of likes. Though I do happen to notice, and I do want to thank you, it seems that no matter how many views I get, there is the regular 20 or so people that like my videos. And to you, I want to say thank you. But today, we're going to move on from this generation which we made in yesterday's video. We're going to go to the generation that I had. Now, for the longest time, I was under the impression that I owned an XB for my very first car and that's what we're focusing on today is my very first car that i ever owned in probably 1998 i bought myself this it actually turns out it was probably an xc because it was a 1977 it was basically a red version of this you know what there we go that's basically like, so that's uh, the picture they had. That's basically what mine looked like. Red with this really nice black trim. Now, unfortunately you can't do that in automation, but we'll get to that. So this was a pretty cool car. It was also the first Australian made car that made available radial tires. And that's what we're going to try to do today. So we got here the car that we want. The car that I had was a four door, but I want to do something that kind of harkens back to a very special car. And that would be this one down here. This went down as a part of Australian motor racing history. 77, Hardy Ferrodo 1000. So you think that at Le Mans was the only time that Ford did a 1-2? I mean, they did a 1-2-3, but you get the idea. This was only a two-car team. They dominated Holden, and it was huge when it happened. So we're going to try to recreate this, and we're going to go with a two-door. Now, what I find funny is this car was originally designed to look a lot like this Ford, whatever this thing is, Torino, which we never got here. But they based it on this, and then they made it a, uh, a four-door version, and then they made it a four-door. And then they, for some reason, then decided to make it a two-door. And, that, I mean, yeah, so we're going to focus on this car very specifically today, and it's going to make me very happy. Because I always wanted one of these, like, just, well, a two-door version of these cars, because they are so gorgeous. Unfortunately, they also cost quite a bit. Oh, you know what? No, I've already done a two-door version. This is an old version, but this is a car that I made a long time ago to kind of whet my appetite. So we're, we're not going to do this one. I did, however, make a whole bunch of mistakes with this. For instance, we went with a monocoque and this had a very unashamed ladder chassis. Also there, you might note that it also has... Yes, that's independent rear suspension. That's not odd, bro. We, we have a choice. Do we go the V8, like the one that I want, or do we go the straight six, which is the very first version of the Barra, which is more of a predecessor to the Barra, since it was a two valve and not a four valve, but basically the same engine. We're gonna... Well, yeah, we're gonna go with a four-door version of this. So it is steel, it is ladder, and more steel. A front longitudinal, double wishbone on the front, yes. And then, what well, I should have had, which was a solid axle leaf. Yep, that's the suspension of the era. Now, it is uh, important to keep in mind that after they released these cars, these absolutely phenomenal. So after these cars, uh, it is important to mention that the Racing Confederation of whatever for Australia did implement a new rule that basically said that cars that enter can be modified from their street versions. That way people don't have to have these crazy ridiculous cars on the street. Which, okay, sure. What we're going to do is we're going to try to create the car that they were going to make, which was the Phase 4. That was the version which had the fuel-injected 600 horsepower engine, baby! Though they did say the engine produced was simply too much for the lightweight chassis to handle and power of a steel was the order of the day. Which is a very, yeah, like... 1970s way of putting it. And here's a little tidbit of information. Apparently the team manager, or team owner, sorry, didn't really believe that it was creating too much oversteer. So he brought them to the Malala Race Circuit, which is actually really not too far from where I live in South Australia. It took him around and immediately was like, oh dear, okay, yes, that is too much power. Well, I'm here to prove you wrong, but we are gonna put it in a more modern version 
Phase 4. They did say that this engine would only create 320 horsepower, but once again, that was probably a lie. And unlike the supercar scare, which was actually brought upon by this exact car that we're about to replicate, except for we're gonna have the updated hood on. We're, and even more power than the 400 here, because we're gonna go with the actual 600 horsepower fuel injected version that they were going to have. We are going to drop the Windsor 351. So they did some sort of amalgamation between the 302 and the 351 Cleveland V8 engine. Now I'm not too savvy on these engines, but we're gonna go with the baseline of the Cleveland V8 and give it higher technology that you get on the Boss 302. So, 90 degree V8, not a uh, not aluminum, cast iron, thank you very much. A bore of 102 millimeters and a stroke of 89 millimeters, giving us our perfect 5.8 liter. This is, I'm assuming, still a push rod engine. Cast iron, cast iron, cast iron, cast iron, because we want to keep this thing. I mean, kind of cheap, though it probably is going to destroy itself any second now. We don't know a lot about this engine. We do know that it's fuel injected, so we can run a little bit higher compression ratio. The last one we had was about 11, so we'll stay with that for the time being. Up this camshaft profile, I get the feeling this thing is going to rev quite high. No to turbo charges. Per cylinder and race, because, yeah, we're not going to do anything pathetic like, uh, say, performance. Then a super leaded fuel I'm going to assume is the call of the day. Up that fuel mixture quite a bit. Probably up this quality a little bit as well, considering that they were getting 600 horsepower out of it. Up the RPM. Race tubular, which is most likely for the day. And nuns. We're only creating 240 kilowatts. This is troublesome. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of details as to what they did to this engine. But we do know that we have to reach 447 kilowatts. Come on. This is a approximately 50 year old engine. I should be able to do this, right? Uh, I've got a hundred more kilowatts to go and I'm already at my limit. Oh wait, this is specifically a race engine. So yes, I can turn up quality sliders quite a bit. There we go. We're getting close. We have to go forged. Uh, and even that can't help us out. God damn. We are at the limit. We cannot push this any harder. Our rev limiter is at its max. The pistons of you know what? I've never tried to drive a vehicle with broken pistons before, but we are going to try it. Wait, we can make more power even if it is running rich. Nice. Eh, not quite. Okay. 400 kilowatts, which is 536 horsepower. You know what? Go ahead. Sneeze at this piddly amount of power. We're probably not going to, however, stick on something, say, like crossplay. Let's give this thing a listen. It does sound like a really cool engine. I like it. And I also do get to use my very favorite mechanical fuel injection. It's because I grew up with Volvos. The Volvo I grew up with had mechanical fuel injection. That's why I love it so much. Those things were clad iron strong and tuning was simple. It was just a screwdriver. So literally there is nothing else we could do here. We might be able to do something with the carburetor, but I want the mechanical. We are going to make this the Ford Racing Blue color, so we've got that going for us. And we are going to select the four-door version because the Phase 4 would have come in the family car model, and the family car model was a lot more popular. Even though it's a four-door and it doesn't have what's described as the Coke bottle design, we are going to try to replicate this in some kind of fashion. Rear wheel drive, manual gearbox. I believe that they came in a four speed, even though the one that I had was an automatic three speed and I hated it for it. The thing still had quite a decent amount of power though. I see no transmission information here. So it's probably still rocking the same old transmission as it still is rocking a lot of the same things, including chassis from the previous version, which would be these gearboxes right here. Now, I want to give it a proper differential, but once again, I think that we're just going to go open because we can't really replicate the, trans uh, the thing in this era of years for car. Now, here's the special part, radials. It's saying that it's got the similar sort of size for radials. But when you have a look at the actual car, they look much bigger than that. Those are big balloons wrapped around there. Those things are ginormous. So we are gonna go with slicks. They are gonna be quite wide. We are going with aluminium, uh, alloy wheels, which we're going to select right now. We want them to look something like this. Go there, that is good. 
Though they have a lot less offset than the actual one. There we go, we've got the gold insert and the chrome outer. Perfect. Solid disc on the front, I'm assuming, and then probably drums once again on the rear. No under tray, a little bit of brake airflow, but not a huge amount for back in the day, I suppose. Those seats look good. They will be premium because there's still not a buckety type seat in these cars. As you can see here, they are still quite flat. There is a little bit of bucketing, but not much. A basic AM radio, hydraulic power steering, and basic safety. Though, we're gonna drop that quality down a bit, you know, just because that's what they did. Standard, gas monotube, passive, and we're gonna set this to sport. We are going with the GS Rally Pack, which is actually what I had on my car. This right here, this was on my car, and oh god, it made me feel special. It's what gave me the black stripes, and all of this doodad stuff with the hood vent. Oh, I was so in love with it. If only the thing wasn't so rusty. Uh, let me tell you what happened. I spent months working on this car, learning how to replace rusted panels. So I replaced a little bit of rust around here, replaced basically this entire part here on the front fenders, did both sides, got it all right. And then I went to look at the rest of the car and I'm like, okay, what do I do next? And I noticed a little bit of bubbling here around the window area. I started to pick away at it. And then after a couple of minutes, I realized there was no pillar left. I was crushed. At that point I went, no, I don't know how to fix this. I don't have the skill, I don't have the tools, I don't have anything, and I did not have the money. I was a teenager. This was beyond my bounds, and that's when I started to look at the rest of the car. The car was just rotted. So I sold it. I was so disappointed. But that's not gonna happen to this car. It's going to be amazing. The car has severe issues with wheel spin. Am I surprised? No. Let's lengthen out this gearbox to start with. Oh dear. This, oh dear. They were worried about going 160. <laughs> They're glad they never saw this car. That was 190 miles an hour. Though I very much doubt this thing actually reaching that. Now this is just the final drive. We are gonna try to replicate at least the same gearbox. Though it was probably a racing gearbox, but you get the idea. So we're going with a 2.46 to 1, I think. There we go. 2.45 is as close as we can get it. We got 22% wheel spin. But our 0 to 100 is 5.7. Jesus. Oh, I love it. So we had good drivability, but we're going to increase that, reduce our sportiness, just so we can get a little bit of extra drivability in here. 99.2? 99.8? 97. Okay. There we go ginormous rear wheels. We're gonna have a lot of understeer, but I am fine with that considering what we had to deal with yesterday. Oh no! Fortunately, however, that sticks out the rear end and it doesn't quite look like it fits this car's rear wheel. It's a little too big. So we're gonna make sure it at least tucks underneath there. There we go. Back to the flashing red light. Hey, you've got wheel spin. Let's have a look at our brakes. Oh dear god. We unfortunately don't have the information as to what sort of rear brakes it ran. So we're gonna keep running with drums and we're just gonna increase the brake pad tie because this was a race car and then set it to the rear. That's as good as we can get though. Brakes suffer from brake fade. Oh no. I get the feeling that the brake fade is going to be in the rears. So, I mean, that's fine, as long as we don't lose our front brakes. Our front brakes are really important. And, it's, I mean, it's not like we're gonna be able to drive fast with this thing. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Well, let's get to styling this thing. A four-door version of an iconic race car. Looking at this rear spoiler here, I just noticed how it kind of wraps around in a weird way. It makes me feel as if this was designed in automation. <laughs> If I hear a single one of you trying to throw up over how ugly this car is, I'm gonna be quite upset. But, uh, I mean, it's come out, uh, something similar to the actual car. I'm not gonna do a cutback, I'm gonna let you just imagine what the car looked like. I wish I could make this scene look less wet, because this does look kind of Australian, this scene. Unfortunately, yeah, it just, it's just wet. So, we're about to take this absolutely uncontrollable car over to BMNG, this leaf sprung 
Ladder Chassis POS. We're gonna see how much power we can truly put through this rear differential. Oh goodness gracious, I don't like my chances. It seems that I've created quite a few fjords. And I don't even consider myself a forward fan. I suppose this was just, well, coincidence that I went from forward to forward. God damn it. So I've owned this car. Well, not this exact car, but like similar. I own this car currently, except no, not that same engine. And I have basically this car, except, you know, not as ugly and a whole lot better. So this car has taken two hours to make try to replicate, come up with ideas on how to do certain things, and to finally get it into BeamNG. Now, are we happy with the results? Well, we're about to find out. That's a lot of power. I also forgot to put the exhaust in, so it's just coming out of that back vent area. This is awesome. You know what? It actually doesn't handle terribly. I'm assuming that the original 600 horsepower uh, uh, one that they were going to use might have come on radials because it was XA. It was using the old style of radial, uh, not radial, cross ply tires. But then this version, this year's model came with uh, the proper style of radial tires as an option. And in the race version, yes, they also used the things. This actually handles pretty well. And if this was actually how it handled back in the day with the narrow front tires and the super wide rear tires, much like this one, then yeah, I could see how this handles quite well. Now I have also just noticed that the exhaust comes out of the side here. But if you have a look here, this might be a replica, but it is coming out of the behind the rear tire. Interesting. Well, that's probably something I should do before I upload it to the Where's the Jump Button official BeamMP server where you guys can try this out for yourself. I think the black is a little too black. I could have maybe restrained that a little bit, but for now, it's doing the job. I also noticed that there's a lot of aliasing happening on the screen right about now. Oh boy, this is a bit of a mess. I would turn the graphics back up, but with this and how high of a bitrate I record at, this is uh, kind of the top graphics I can run, especially with this setup. I've had to uh, hamstring my computer quite a bit after that uh, computer death thing. I still haven't completely fixed it. No! Don't die! Well, can we can we save it? No, okay. Well, let's try to save our four-door version of this iconic race supercar. Can you stop pulling things off and just move over? God damn it. There we go. Let's see how much this does of an 11 Z's. Full burnout and hey, away we go. Okay, that's a pretty big burnout. And it would have done considerably worse than that, especially considering the uh, fact that it had more power and probably narrower tires. But for now, like this is a, you know, a pretty good car. I think the little bits of crashes that we had has really made this thing a little bit scary to drive, but it's still quite planted. It's not the worst car I've driven. Uh, I mean, just have a look at yesterday's. Radio, uh, radial tires is where it's at, guys. Never oh, get cross-ply. Oh, tire, you weren't meant to be over there. You are meant to be over here. There we go. Fix and reattach, see? Easy peasy. I, I, all I had to do was just tighten it back up. Now let's do another burnout. Woo! Yes! Ah, oh, it's it's so much fun to just dream about one day owning one of these cars. And you know, even just the four door, I would take the car that I sold all ages ago, and it, with rust and all, and just pretend it wasn't there. Uh, hopefully not die. Woo! Okay, let's try that again, and let's see if this time we can control it, or whether it was actually me being a complete pillock. I, I get the feeling that you probably can control it through there, uh, but it did feel a little bit light going around there. Well, we're, gonna, we're about to see whether it was a real thing or just my lack of skill. Okay, here we come to the corner. We're gonna break a little bit, and oh, 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 okay. It's changing the gears, because I've got it set to automatic. Changing the gear mid-corner in this car is dangerous. It reminds me of that other car that I made. Ugh. It's meant to be super light and then it just kicks out. Okay, well, I think we've proven that this car is good. 
I would take it around its ancestral grounds of... What was it? Bathurst. But not right now. Oh, come on. Really? Goodbye. And thanks for all the fish. Well, we're about to see what it does around the old racetrack. We will take it around the full racetrack. Because I do think that this thing deserves to go the full racetrack. Because I do believe that it would be able to handle it quite well. I mean... It, will it be blistering supercar fast? No. But will it do a decent lap time, for, especially for a car of its age? Yeah. I think this thing will do pretty well. It has no real downforce, though. The wing on the back is all just for looks. Though, there has been some updates. Maybe they fixed that? But I do doubt it. I, I doubt that they did that. Let's just uh, see how... The, no! Oh, oh no. We, we've saved it. Okay, well, it's, it's it's still going. Oh boy, that was uh, hair raising and probably problematic because, yeah, I get the feeling we probably got some sort of damage. I don't feel it quite yet. Oh, 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 it's so sketch. It is so sketchy. Get just put that power down, please. Please put all the power to the floor. That would be fantastic. All right, let's, uh, we know that this thing does bad under brakes. God damn it. Well, this hasn't gone quite to plan, but we got it around the corner at least. And we did it this time without that spin out. So we've saved some time, lost some time, but overall, I think we're doing pretty well. Are we going to beat our classic car kind of era time? Even though I did do that a little too soon. No, we didn't. <laughs> Oh, now we're still beaten by the Model 23 Trim 26. What is that? Oh, it's a truck. It's the race truck. Okay, well, that's a bit embarrassing. Okay, time to do a full lap. Now, I spend a bunch of time trying to learn what all of these uh, things were called. I don't remember what this chicane was called. I've already forgotten the names of the racetrack. I'm trying to remember them. I know it's something S's. I don't really remember. All I, I suppose all I really remember is Kill Rob Chicane, which is a bit of a nightmare because every car is going to be very different and very different in each run. Uh, I don't remember what this. I, I what's it, what's it called? I I missed I missed what the corner said it was. Oh dear. Well, <laughs> we uh we've gone through there pretty well. We went through the double corner there I really like to refer it as. I can't remember what this is. I just call it the Cotswolds now because it sees something or other carousel. So, I mean, it makes sense, right? Let's get this second gear up there and we're going to see what we can do down the back straight. And I know that the corner coming up is called the what is it? Slingshot? Yes, the slingshot. And then after that is Bohemian. Now, what sort of corner speed are we going to get around here with default amounts of lift, no downforce? Oh, 180, 170. Oh, we just touched it, but we are still in a good car. Okay, so it hasn't hurt the car too much. Oh, okay. I think this is Bohemian Bend, which is such a nightmare. You know what? I take that back. It's a nightmare for most cars. This one took it like a champ. Wow, you know what? Actually, I've changed my mind. I reckon if you were to... Oh, oh shit. Oh, put a steering wheel to this and give it a proper good hard go. You might do a really good lap. This thing feels so control... Oh, you know what? I just looked at the time. It's not particularly great. We're at, uh, yeah, a, a not so great. So we're finishing Kill Rob Chicane. Come to... Oh, wait, no. Is that still Kill Rob Chicane? I, I think the... No, it's something else. And then it goes in. This is Adam's Apex. We've dealt with Adam's Apex pretty well. Coming up to... Oh, god damn it. I wish I could remember these and I wish I had the computer. Cossack Corner, that's right. Cossack Corner is not quite so bad. It, it, it'll catch you out if you're trying to get a little too ahead of yourself. And then what's this? Lamb's Corner or something? Lamb Shanks? Something like that. No, come on. You absolute cuck of a car. Right at the end, you decide to screw me over. Well, we've done our lap. It wasn't a great one, but we have gone across. We've given it an official time of a 2.36. Wow. This is way down here. I am a little bit ashamed that I couldn't do it better. I would, however, 
I, you know what? I usually do just put them up on the server, but I would like to put this one up on a downloadable link, put it in the description of the video, and have you guys go around. I would love to know what you guys can do with this car around this track. Let me know. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really did. Recreating a bit of race legendariness here in Australia. Uh, Motocana and a car which I have owned and wish I still owned. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye!